This one skill helped me go from someone who was always getting rejected when applying to jobs all the way to someone who was able to land interviews with companies like Apple, Uber, Facebook, and a bunch of tech startups. Can you guess what it is? It's making a portfolio. It's crazy how this piece of paper right here can make such a huge difference when it comes to getting job interviews. In this video, I'll go into more detail on what a portfolio is, why it's so important, what mine looks like, and I'll share with you the six step process on how you can organize your portfolio with a free template at the end. A portfolio is just a place for you to show your work by sharing samples of what you've done in the past. There are three main ways in how you can create a portfolio. First, you can create a PDF document that shows images of your work as well as a very brief summary of it. This is ideal for hardware engineers where the projects they work on are pretty tangible. Second, your project can be on a GitHub account where you basically are just sharing your code with the hiring manager. This works best for software engineers. Finally, your portfolio can be a website where you share pictures of your work, tangible prototypes, or even some of your designs. Also on a portfolio website, if you've built apps or you've worked on programming projects, you can share them there as well. Making a website works really well for both hardware and software engineers. If you plan on making your portfolio on a GitHub account or through your own personal website, just make sure to have a link to that in your resume. However, out of the three options, the easiest one is to create a PDF document as your portfolio. So if you've never created a portfolio in the past, I'd recommend starting there. It doesn't matter what kind of engineering you're in, whether you're in mechanical or in software, you should take your best projects, compile them into one document, attach it to your resume, and then submit that when you're applying for jobs. Doing so will help you get way more job interviews. That's because when anyone applies to a job, they always submit a resume, but not everyone submits a portfolio. So by submitting one, it helps you stand out. It also helps the person trying to decide whether or not they should hire you if you're worth their time. Just think about it from the recruiter's perspective. If they look through your resume and portfolio and they see you working on projects that are potentially similar to what you could be working on at the company, they'll most likely want to interview you and just have a chat with you. However, do keep in mind that if you're applying to both hardware and software jobs, you should make sure to have separate portfolios for each. So what makes a good portfolio? First, you have to show the process and not just the finished work. Second, you have to be clear on what you did, how you did it, and the final results. Third, you should try your best to tell a story with your work. Fourth, show your hard technical skills with every project on your portfolio. Fifth, when you're applying to jobs, your portfolio should be somewhat tailored to the job. But I know what you're thinking. I'm applying to hundreds of jobs. There's no way I can tailor a portfolio to every single job I apply to. That means I have to make hundreds of portfolios. So the way to get around that is by creating a master portfolio. A master portfolio contains all the projects that you've worked on in the past. That way, when you're applying to a company, you can just pick and choose the projects that you want to share with them. For example, let's say you have project experience working in consumer electronics, aviation technology, electric vehicles, and robotics. If you're applying to a company like Tesla, Lucid, or Uber, then save your electric vehicle projects for those kind of jobs. That being said, these skills in engineering are actually pretty transferable. So just because you have a lot of aviation engineering experience doesn't mean you can't transfer industries and work with electric vehicles engineering instead. For example, from my experience working at Tesla, I was able to transfer the skills I learned working with electric vehicles into where I'm working now at a robotics startup. One thing to keep in mind when submitting a PDF portfolio is that there's usually a size limit. So what I would do is I would first use a website called PDF Joiner to join my resume and portfolio into one PDF. The file it produces tends to be pretty big. So then I use another website called PDF Compressor to compress that file into a file small enough that I can upload it when applying to jobs. Obviously, after compressing it, the images in my portfolio may be a little blurry, but it's still readable, so it's not that bad. Also, in terms of how many pages your portfolio should be, there is a huge spectrum. I've seen people submit portfolios that are just one page long, and I've seen other people submit portfolios that are like tens of pages. So I personally prefer to make portfolios that are like two to three pages long, where every project is intentional and somewhat relates to the overall job that I'm applying to. The hiring manager or recruiter probably wouldn't want to read through a 20 page portfolio, but if it's just a two pager, they'll take a quick glance at it, especially if it's mostly pictures. Now I'll briefly share with you what my portfolio looks like, then I'll erase it completely and redo it from scratch to guide you through the six step process of building a good portfolio. Starting off my portfolio with the heading, I have my name, major and university. I also have my contact information like email, LinkedIn and phone number. The LinkedIn URL is a hyperlink, so if you open this PDF on your laptop, it takes you directly to my profile. I also like to add some color in my portfolio, so it's easier on the eyes. 
Here I chose to go with a light baby blue. Starting off with the first project in my portfolio, here I show some images and I go into a lot more detail on the what, how, and the results aspect of my projects. For this particular project, which was called a centrifuge tube reader, the what aspect was that I designed and fabricated a device that reads the sediment and water quantity in oil with over 95% accuracy. The how aspect was that I used she metal features in SOLIDWORKS. Finally, the result of this project was that the design fulfilled its purpose with 97% accuracy versus the 80% that existed previously when readings were done by humans. Also notice how here I try to tell a story and show the design process by showing the part alone, then showing the part in an assembly, and finally showing the part when it was finally built. Moving on to the second project in my portfolio is the tube holder. The what, how, and results sections are clearly labeled. I like to bold my technical skills that I think matter the most, the type of stuff that the hiring manager for a mechanical engineering position will find important. Again, I always include pictures of the CAD and in real life to show the design process. The same thing applies to my third project that's called a solar panel test fixture that I worked on at Access Labs. One thing to notice here that's different is that in this project there was some electrical work since I had to use an Arduino, do some wiring and soldering. However, I didn't talk about it too much because I'd like to work for mechanical engineering roles and not electrical roles. Another example of a project in my portfolio was this thermostat packaging that I did for Ecobee. So if you order a thermostat from Ecobee, it comes in this really nice packaging and the unboxing of it is really satisfying. However, Ecobee also sells thermostats to contractors who are building new houses. These contractors would usually receive the thermostat in this really nice packaging, but honestly, they didn't care about this nice packaging. All they wanted was a thermostat in one piece. So because they didn't care about this really nice packaging and this packaging was also very expensive, I worked on designing and building this packaging that would keep the thermostat safe against drops and impacts but would also be very cheap. So that's the what of this project. The how aspect was that I did this by using SOLIDWORKS to design the outer box and I was in contact with manufacturers in China to fabricate the packaging. The outcome was that I was able to reduce production cost by 62% and I built strong relationships with Chinese manufacturers which is actually very important when building hardware products like this. So the past four projects were professional projects that I did at work and the next two projects were ones that I did personally either on my own or with friends. When you're first starting out, most of your projects will be personal projects, but as you get more experience through your internships, make sure to include those professional projects instead of your personal projects on your portfolio. However, in engineering, keep in mind that some companies tend to be very secretive, so make sure that you get their approval before you share your professional projects they did with them. For example, in my portfolio, I didn't share any of my projects from my time working at Tesla as an engineer because they were super secretive about everything that I was doing. They are definitely not okay with me sharing CAD or images of car parts that haven't been released yet. Moving on, the first personal project I work on is called the drill guard and essentially you would place it on a working drill and it collects dust as you drill. Moving on, the second personal project I worked on is called happy. It's just a toilet attachment that analyzes your pee before it's flushed away to allow you to track your health and detect any possible diseases in the early stage. I chose to use a whole page to talk about this project because I'm not restricted on what I can say. With all my professional projects, I need to be very careful when talking about them so I don't say any confidential information. But here, I can say whatever the heck I want. Now that you've seen my portfolio, it's time to delete everything, download my Canva template that you'll find in the video description, and recreate my portfolio in six steps. Now, before starting your portfolio, you need to ask yourself some questions. First, what type of positions are you aiming for? Second, what type of work does this company do? Third, what would my job responsibilities be? These questions can help you figure out two things, the types of projects you should focus on and the kind of skills you wanna present. If you don't wanna code in your new job, then don't share a lot of projects that involve coding. If you wanna be doing a lot of mechanical design, then share a lot of your CAD work instead. Or maybe you wanna be working as a product manager. In that case, you shouldn't be sharing your CAD or your code at all. To make creating your portfolio very easy, you need to make sure that you're constantly taking pictures of all your projects at work. Whether that would be screenshots of your CAD, pictures of your first or final prototype, or maybe even sketches of some of your projects if you're really good at drawing. I'll start off by having folders on my laptop for every single project I want to include on my portfolio. Each folder will be named after the project and within each folder, I'll make sure to include images of everything that was involved in this project and maybe even some CAD models. Then choose three images that best describe what was going on in that project. Ideally, one picture in the initial stage of the project, one picture halfway through the product development process, and one picture at the end of the project. 
Next, block off every section in your portfolio with a concise title. Try to go for a name that makes it clear what the project you're working on is about. I also like to include small company logos just because I think it makes my portfolio look a little more aesthetic. Moving on, you should think of your portfolio as a document filled with images with some text that briefly explains what's going on in these images. It definitely should not be as wordy as your resume. Under each image, I'll have the what, how, and results subheadings. Then a brief description to highlight what I did, how I did it, and the final results of the project. I try my best to make sure I don't repeat anything that was already mentioned in my resume. The what section briefly explains what I did on this particular project and the overall project purpose. The how section talks about the skills I learned from this project and what kind of software or tools I used to work on it. The results section just shares the overall outcome and whether or not this project actually fulfilled its purpose. If you achieved it, that's awesome. Try to back it up by including numbers like reduce production costs by 62%. If you're unsuccessful in achieving the project purpose, that's totally fine. Just briefly explain why and make sure to include some kind of numbers as well because engineers love numbers. Once you've roughly included all your projects with some images and some brief text, you should consider the order of how you place your projects. You can either present it chronologically where you start with your most recent project and go all the way down to your oldest work. Or you can talk about your best and most relevant projects and then work your way down. It really just comes down to what you prefer. I've personally always done the most relevant projects first, as long as they're not like too, too old. Finally, I'll save the top heading at the end, adding things like my name, major, university, and contact information. I'll also just add a link to my LinkedIn profile here for easy access. Afterwards, I'll look through my portfolio and see where else I can add useful links. For example, for my happy project, I added a hyperlink to a video I made about the project in case you want to learn more. You don't have to use my layout, by the way, for your engineering portfolios. It's just a template. So if you decide to go a different way, here are a few things that you need to make sure not to include. First, really old projects where you don't really remember its details. Second, projects you didn't actually work on, obviously. Third, projects that are bad or boring or even projects that you hate. Oh, and please don't share irrelevant work experience. For example, if you're applying to an engineering job and you worked at a fast food restaurant in the past, don't include that in your portfolio. And also make sure not to include like random hobbies because sadly, no one really cares. Now, if you're a young engineer, one thing that you should focus on and that will actually help you stand out when being compared to more senior experienced engineers is your theoretical knowledge. Because if you're still in school or you're just fresh out of school, you most likely remember the theoretical stuff you learned in class better than these senior engineers do. So use that to your advantage. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I share with you my experience working as a Tesla engineer, or check out that video where I share with you a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to get engineering internships. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.